Good evening, uh, Rotary Club of uh, Chennai Coastal. It's been uh, a great evening, and uh, I first of all thank my inspiring president, uh, Rotarian Dharampal Pandya sir, and the current president, Rotarian Rajesh Ketan sir, and the team of Rotary Club of Chennai Coastal for inviting me to speak today in your regular meeting. So I thought the topic for today would be living with COVID-19 because I have been speaking on prevention of infection and how to improve immunity and all these topics before but what happens now is we have been out of the lockdown and we are now getting into the public and now the real fear comes whether I have to go out, whether I can sustain my life, whether I can mix with people all this doubt comes and I thought this particular point of time living with COVID-19 would be the best topic to speak. As an Ayurvedic doctor for this problem you may expect I may say some four or five medicines and then close up the session. That's not how it, uh, it is going to be because just uh, taking medicines is not going to help you to build your immunity. While going through my presentation, you will come to know what are the things that help you to build immunity. It's not something you buy in shop, it's something you take, you uh, eat and how you live. All these things only will help you to build immunity, not just one kashayam, two kashayams or some supplements like vitamins, zinc, that is going to build your immunity. So let me get into the presentation, I have made a small PPT, yes, so uh, coming into today's topic, how to live with COVID-19. The routines that we follow is going to help us much rather than taking some medicines like Kashayam or Legium or tablets. So that is what I am trying to insist here in my presentation, this is uh, our channels and this is my hospital and my clinic at West Mamblam. I don't need to tell you about COVID-19 because I think every one of you would have now done PhD on COVID already. All the symptoms and other things have been discussed elaborately in all channels, uh, medias and other things. So I'm not getting into the symptoms and severity and other things. But the questions in our mind right now is how long I can self-isolate myself, how uh, I am going to cater my work, how I am going to sustain my life, all these questions are there in our mind. So how we are going to overcome this? The first idea is what the government says, 
we are going to follow all these things immaterially whatever our immunity is whatever precautions we take these has to be followed social distancing hand wash hygiene cough adequacy isolation if symptoms arise all these things are basic necessity that we are going to follow there's no second opinion on it but we do have certain other things which are mentioned by who so in their website in who you can see these are the things that have been mentioned reducing sugars cutting down salt taking more of fruits and vegetables in avoiding alcohol taking good fat and avoiding bad fat and taking lot of water keep yourself hydrated so all these are basic things which have been stressed by who during this lockdown period to keep yourself healthy but apart from this there are certain additional precautions that has to be taken as a responsible citizen we have to avoid spitting in the public and we have to make sure that friends and people around us do not do that uh, the same and they follow all this general social distancing and other norms so that can be stressed and even inside home social distancing is necessary now get so many people inside our, our home every day and so we have to be little careful on that and we have to be extra conscious on groceries meat milk newspapers letters and other things there are lot of studies suggesting that there is no virus capturing through all these things but still if you have some immuno suppressive patients at home if you have diseased people or a very old people at home then a little more consciousness can be had in handling all this day to day things at home and uh, uh, of course we can wash all these things and bring it to our home that is the simple basic thing that we can do and we can avoid raw foods and hotel foods because if you take something and you get some symptoms of fever it may be bacterial fever also but what you will immediately think okay i think i have got corona that's the feeling that we will get so why to get into that so let us be little precautious on that so ayurvedic insights on epidemics see epidemics are not new you will all know epidemics have been there this reference is from one of the textbooks of ayurveda which is written 3000 years back which says prasangat gatra samsparshat nihishvasa sagabojanat sahashayas api vastramali anulepana kushtam jwaram cha shosham cha netra bhishyanti evacha aupasargika roga ka samkara manti naran naran which means these are the possible ways uh, the epidemics spread by nature so this has been there past 3000 years even more than that in that now in the present scenario since we are dealing with covid here we have a reference of nihishwasam so initially we were people were saying that only by cough and sneeze you get disease but now people have started saying that simple loud speak or simple breathing can also bring out the droplets from the infected patient's mouth and that can infect people so these are the insights which have been dealt in ayurveda not now but 3000 years back so does everybody get covid we see three stages one is just because of exposure when we take nasal swab person becomes positive but still he doesn't develop any disease the second thing is most of the people get mild symptoms and just like normal cold and they get recovered easily out of this so these two categories comprises of about 95% of patients whereas the last 5% is only what we see exaggerated in the tvs of all the severe cases who need oxygen support who need an icu support so when we see when you uh, see a plague you see about 50 to 60% of people get affected but covid is not like that covid is only 5% which is going to get severe and that too when people with comorbidity they only get it more severe than others so what ayurveda says about immunity is it's not just with taking medicines it's about your digestion when you have your digestion in its best then you don't get any disease at all so you can ask me what is the relationship between an infection and digestion so i as i already told you best digestion will give you best nutrition and best nutrition will give you best immunity so when you see the present scenario also most of the people 
get positive but recover without needing any support so now uh, the icmr guidelines have been revised most of the people who are positive are requested to stay home and only when symptoms arise they are brought to the hospital not otherwise so which means that you might have the bacteria in your nose but that is not going to get into your lungs and cause a disease so when you have a good immunity this is going to happen when you want good immunity you should have good digestion that is what ayurveda stresses so this immunity and digestion has a lot of relationship with depression stress diabetes and covid and when you are stressed and depressed your immunity comes down we will see in the uh, in the next slides how this is going to happen when coming to solution is there a solution that is what is question in all our mind so here covid management the ayurvedic way ayurveda says what are the possible ways of developing immunity a man born in a country where there is a natural strength all these things in in this life are not in our hands so these are by destiny that we born in a good country like you see italy most of the people the death rate is around the 12% but in india the death rate is very low when there is a good strength in the season then all these things are not in our hands when the parents don't have any defective genes so all these things are not in our hands but what is in our hands is when you see the slide ingestion of nutritious food physical strength good adaptability being a youth and having regular exercises and having a mind which is sound all these things are in our hands to boost up the immunity these are the references that is told in charaka samhita which is a textbook which was written around 3000 years back for immunity which we say ojo vriddhi kara bhava the sanskrit term for immunity is ojas and ojo vriddhi kara bhava is what is been explained in these ways and when you see the uh, body's immune mechanism as per modern medicine there are so many physical barriers in the body which is going to block the bacteria and virus which is going to get into your body the first major protective organ in our body is the skin so when you and then you have mucosal linings of your all your exposed parts like mouth nose ears anus and all these areas we have mucosal linings which is going to take care of that barrier and then we have chemical barriers for all we take this bacteria and viruses inside our gastric juices are going to destroy them and then we have gut enzymes some favorable bacteria is already existing in the body which is going to neutralize the effects of harmful bacteria and virus and then we have so many cellular barriers in the level of blood which is going to act and produce immunity so here i want to specify a important point what happens when you take a cold water generally we say hot water or warm water is always good it's not about cold water mainly is because there is a mucosal resistance in the throat and the most contaminated part of our body is not the anus but it's your mouth the mouth has many bacteria already in it and when you take cold water this resistance of the mucosal lining gets damaged and thereby the bacteria inside our mouth can cause a throat infection so it's not about a contaminated water it's about just a cold water which can cause an infection so always try to have warm water because warm water is called prananam avalambanam which means it protects your prana which is life it sustains your life then you have all other things role of saliva saliva has a lot of enzymes in it which is going to destroy the bacteria and viruses nowadays in the fast growing world we are not chewing the food at all that is why we get lot of problems simply sit calmly and take the food chew it well and swallow it that itself gives you a lot of immunity for females the vaginal ph is major immunity factor because females are prone for infections but whereas the vaginal ph prevents them from having infection so these are the some of the barriers which are already we are having in our body so this can be protected by having personal hygiene bath timely food and proper food and having a good mind body and sleep so these things can be taken care with simple basic things of life then what ayurveda says for prevention of diseases healthy balanced diet immunomodulation which is detoxification 
active lifestyle and balanced body weight note the point balanced body weight these are very essential to keep your metabolism strong and to prevent diseases not only infections but any disease so there are very simple ways to tackle our current scenario we have we can categorize them into four points one is the food the next one is activities the third one is exercise and fourth one is medicines and the fifth one is doing some external treatments Tamil, I have quoted here, Marindu Kal Madhi Mukkal, which means your problem can be overcome with medicines only 25%, whereas all the other things will be contributing 75% to overcome your health issues. So that is what is mainly targeted here. So I can give you a simple tackling mantra for this crisis, which I have named it as Beware. Be safe, eat proper, work more, avoid stress and rest yourself so when you are able to follow these five simple steps you can have a good immunity and you can overcome this problem maybe you will not get infected whether if you get infected still you can come out of the problem with no symptoms or mild symptoms simple ways to tackle food so this is again what ayurveda says ushniyat which means you have to take the food always warm it has to have little Onctuous portion, little oil or ghee to it. Matravat, you cannot take full stomach food. Ayurveda says three parts of the stomach has to be divided. One part is for solid food, the next part is for liquid food, and the third part should be kept empty. But what we do, we eat the food now, akantam payayat, which means when we open the mouth, the food can be seen. Like that, we now take the food till the throat. That is not good actually. Then jirna mashniyat, which means you have to take the food when only when your previous food is digested and then you should not take mutually contraindicated food like ghee and honey together meat and curd together chicken and curd together fish and milk together all these are mutually contraindicated foods there are so many things you can refer internet about mutually contraindicated foods as per ayurveda then you have to take a take the food in a comfortable place and you should not take it very fastly and you should not take it very slowly also and importantly this point is very important you should not speak you should not laugh and you should concentrate on taking food nowadays what we do whenever we want to meet then we are planning to go to a hotel to meet that's not how our hinduism or our culture is our in our culture eating is a spiritual event whereas in American culture, eating is a social event. Now we are coming into a social event. That is why we are getting so many problems. Whereas if you are considering your eating habit as a spiritual event, your immunity and your digestion, your metabolism will be always best. And if you are confused with all these things, you can get into Tirukural Marindu Adhikaram where Tirukural says lot of things about food and how to take food. That will also be very helpful to keep your metabolism strong. So this is very important whenever we reach like 40 years we always consider that extra part of fat around our stomach to be a prestigious one which is actually bad. Now you see most of the deaths are happening in 50 plus 55 plus people and with comorbidities. For all these comorbidities your first problem is the fat around your belly. So first you get fat which is obesity and then you get hypertension then cholesterol comes. When cholesterol hypertension comes, you are becoming diabetic and when diabetes comes, all the other things comes together, your immunity drops, your metabolism drops and all the problems, the diabetes opens a new uh, arena for more diseases to come into your body, diabetic retinopathy, neuropathy, nephropathy and so many things come into the body. So first issue is try to keep maintaining your waistline because waistline is your lifeline. There are simple ways in your food. We are in summer, so try to reduce your salt and spicy and oily foods. Fried foods can be avoided. Dry fruits and almonds can be taken. Importantly, you have to concentrate on taking all the shut dressers of food. See, we have six tastes in our food, which is sweet. When you take excess sweet, then there is a problem of diabetes. When you take excess salt, then there is a problem of hypertension. When you take excess spice, hot, then there is a problem of getting ulcers. When you take excess sore foods, then allergy, asthma, wheezing and the, all these things come. But when you take more of bitter foods, then when you take more of astringent foods, what we call as Tikta Kashaya Rasam in Ayurveda, 
you don't get any disease at all because these two tastes are going to build your immunity that is why whenever you take any vegetable they are all having this bitter and astringent taste only and when you take any kashayams of ayurveda siddha when you take any modern medicines example a crocin and amoxicillin all uh, the medicines are only bitter in taste because bitter is the only taste which is going to help you build your immunity and have your metabolism stronger so try to concentrate on all the six tastes in your food as long as possible take vegetarian food which is good if you are planning to take meat let your digestion be at the best and then only you can take meat try to finish off your dinner by 7 o'clock and try to include more of ginger and amla in your food green gram is actually good in this season as well as in this pandemic whereas black gram can be avoided which is what we call as ulundu it's not good but nowadays what happened is we have started taking ulundu very frequently in the name of idlis and dosas and that is why we are landing up in having metabolic errors obesity and all these issues then intake of curds can be avoided and if you are okay with curds you can take curds afternoon not in the nights and of course when i say salty spicy and oily foods that includes pickles also and these are the things that can be changed in your kitchen we already saw some of these things sugar is having bleached things that can bring diabetes and can cause many more problems into you salt can be changed into the himalayan rock salt oils can be changed into cold pressed oils then we have uh, plastics and aluminium can be removed from your kitchen then we have asafoetida see asafoetida is in tamil it is called as perungaya perungaya because kaya means body and this is going to be a big medicine for the body so that is why it is called as perungaya in tamil but what we have done now we are not using asafoetida as it is but what we have done is we have made it into free flow asafoetida which is actually having 55% of maida into it maida itself is controversial and we should not take it on top of it this asafoetida is going to give us lot of troubles so when you take original asafoetida it is going to help you have a good digestion and thereby everything will have a better way of metabolism and immunity and non veg we have spoken already and now comes refrigerator see now what happens is uh, we had refrigerators in our home previously in the size of a locker but now what happened the refrigerator has come to a size of a room what we have made is monday sambar tuesday kolambu wednesday sabji all these things we are naming and keeping it in the refrigerator and that is what is causing lot of issues when you reheat 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 and you see then you have problems similarly uh, when you keep milk and curd in the refrigerator and take it and directly use what happens is the uncooked foods the raw vegetables and fruits when we keep it in the refrigerator they will have some bacteria they get into your curd and when you take that curd out of your fridge and have it then you might have sore throat and all this issue so curd is not in, not causing a problem it's about your refrigerator so use your refrigerator maximum for uncooked foods don't use cooked foods maximum one or two times you can keep cooked foods in the refrigerator but don't keep reheating the foods uh, out of refrigerator that is going to cause more harm to your body then you have utensils to use stainless steel is good and uh, copper is also good now also the recent researches in the covid says that covid on copper is only 3 hours viable it seems see that is why in olden days we had copper door locks copper door knobs copper vessels because it is naturally disinfectant uh, nowadays we have forgotten that but nowadays what we get is stylish closed to copper vessels which is also equally dangerous because they have greenish coating inside which is which can cause digestive disturbance so if you are using copper beware clean it well dry it and then use it or else plainly use stainless steel vessels that is actually good then when we come to fruit juices we can definitely first we saw food now we are seeing liquids so in this liquid category we are seeing this amla amla based juices why we are more speaking on amla we can, we have so many vegetables we have lemon we have oranges we have mosambi so mandarins all these have good vitamin c even goas but why we say repeatedly on amla is one important point is amla can be processed anyway and that still will not lose vitamin c 
whereas if you process have you ever heard of heating a uh, orange juice no have you ever cooked goa no because when you do these things to those fruits and vegetables they lose their vitamin c only amla preserves vitamin c and that vitamin c when you take that in any form like legium like morappa like patal in all these forms amla can be taken fresh juices or honey first amlas anything can be taken all these will give equal vitamin c and that is why amla is always speak, uh, spoken superiorly in traditional medicine including ayurveda and siddha so this is a good combination you can see in the ppt it's about in gooseberry which is amla which is called nellika and then fresh lime and turmeric you can add jaggery to it and you can have this this is going to be a immune boosting drink this has been suggested by tamil nadu government in the arogyam scheme they have recently launched arogyam scheme where they are managing covid patients with herbal medication so in that this is part of their regular regimen a covid patient is given this juice regularly so this can be taken regularly and this will give you a lot of immunity but don't add a synthetically prepared amla juice and don't add sugars to it that is not going to solve the purpose then of course we already saw as per who avoid alcohol carbonated drinks artificial fruit juices cold water and generally fruit juices you may wonder why doctor is saying to avoid fruit juices see as i already told you saliva is the first digestive agent in your body to simplify your food to break down your food so if you keep on taking juices it is not going to help it is not going to give you any fiber it is only going to add more of sugars to your body so once in a while when you are very tired when you are fatigued you can definitely when you go out and come very fatigued you can have juices but daily having 11 o'clock i'll have a juice that is not good so do not have juices instead you can have fruits you can chew the fruits and have that is going to help you that is very much important we already saw curds better to be taken in the afternoons not in the night because curds are considered to be heavy foods and that's why generally in ayurveda we say curds should not be taken in the night however if you are comfortable in taking curd in the night you can definitely have but try to have the food earlier in the evenings maybe 6:30 7 that would be better but the best time for using buttermilk instead of curd is this because we are in a hot summer so better than curd buttermilks are good buttermilks can be added with rock salt and ginger and curry leaves and can be had that is more beneficial in the present scenario of covid as well as in the grishma ritu which is hot summer and then we can have hot drinks what we call as mulai tea you will all know about mulai tea in tamil it is called as adimadram with black pepper and mulai tea and turmeric sukku tea sukku malli coffee and avaram tea these can be had and tamil nadu government and ministry of ayush also promotes golden milk which is having one spoon of turmeric to your milk and drinking it in the night as you all know turmeric is part and parcel of life we are using it in two notions one is for precautionary which is safety antibacterial antiviral and all the next thing is we call in tamil as mangalam mangal so which means it is a full of holiness so turmeric is going to provide scientifically lot of antibacterial antiviral antifungal activities so include more of turmeric in your food and of course tulasi tea with all this combinations can be taken that is also very nice and it is going to help you uh, build your immunity and then coming to activity see most of the patients now who have got into the severe modes have all never had any active lifestyle all had any sedentary lifestyle or had some lung issues already so what we have to do is we have to increase the lungs capacity for increasing the lung ca- lungs capacity we have to do some exercises this picture says see you should not put a time schedule to do exercise simply see when you are attending a phone call you can simply walk and speak when you are seeing tv you can simply rotate your hands when you are traveling you can simply rotate your head simple ways of incorporating exercise in your daily routine will help if you are putting a separate schedule for your exercises you will always have an excuse sir i don't have time at all i cannot concentrate on exercises don't do such things try to inculcate exercise as part of your routines like daily when you take bath daily when you brush yourself like that try to make exercise daily in some part of your day it need not be in the mornings but it should not be immediately after your food that is the only thing that has to be seen 
uh, exercises can be of different forms aerobic exercises resistance training and flexibility and exercises need not be just exercises it can be even in the form of cooking or washing or cleaning gardening sports activities anything can be uh, included in your exercises but see all these exercises have to be done in outside home under sun that is very important nowadays what we do we put an ac and sit inside the room and start doing exercises that is not going to help you anyway some fresh air and some sunlight is always essential because vitamin d what we get through sunlight is going to help you much in building immunity because vitamin c vitamin d has a lot of functions including fertility and immunity so vitamin d when you stay inside home we have been in the lockdown for one and a half two months and that is definitely would have reduced our vitamin d so better get under sun and start doing your routines and as i already told stress and depression is going to increase our chances for getting severity of covid and such other diseases see how the asanas are going to help they are going to reduce your cortisol which are stress hormones and that is how we are going to regulate the hormones in our body so kindly do some asanas it is going to help you much uh, you can do kapalabhati pranayama nadi shuddhi uh, asanas when you see pranayama see brain has ultimate power to control your body but what can you give to your brain to make it superior is not about your food it's not about your water it's only about your oxygen what you breathe 100% 25% of this breathing oxygen is taken to the brain the remaining 75% is only supplied to the body the brain is hardly 5% of your body weight but it is taking 25% of oxygen so if you give more oxygen to the brain the brain is going to tackle the situation and it is going to win over many crisis situations in the body including covid yes you can see surya namaskaram we can do surya namaskaram as i already told you it's good it is going to increase the flexibility of the body increase your breathing give strength to your lungs there are some simple things you have to note when you are using your routines because the topic is family and workplace routines so i have added this slide and nowadays we are not using the indian restrooms we are using the american type restrooms which is also going to damage the american association itself it says that if you have some difficulty in passing stools you have to adapt to the position which is 35 degrees which is basically an indian restroom position which can help you to evacuate completely so as long as you evacuate yourself completely the toxins from your body gets out and your body is much better in terms of immunity and metabolism and of course while working you can follow certain restrictions because when i ask you to do a padmasana in the routines if you say sir i have a back pain i cannot do padmasana then what is the use of all the other routines all the other activities nothing is possible so you have to see to that your body is or uh, always kept in a good position so that you not get stress and strain based injuries what we call as wear and tear based injuries when you use computers you are prone to get neck pain back pain and all there are simple things you have to put your chair close to the computer you have to sit upright you have to see to that the monitor is kept at the eye level try to get out of the computer at least like 45 minutes once and relax yourself and get back to the computer that will help you more for your eyes your brain and your body then when you are driving see if, uh, nowadays we are purchasing the sports vehicles and that is causing all the back issues many people are coming to me saying that they are driving vehicles and that is why they are getting back pains when they are resting they don't get back pain so driving should be very careful when you drive most of us uh, will have a car when we drive we should see to that our thighs are in right angles to the seat and uh, our shoulders are rested to the back and when we hold the uh, steering wheel the wheel has to be below your chin and when you hold it it has to be when you hold it in 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock position there has to be a mild angle in your hand it should not be straight like this or you should not hold your steering like this so this it is the best way of driving a vehicle so that you can avoid the driving based injuries to your body then we saw this pranayama and vajrasana vajrasana is a very good exercise and that is going to help the digestion and metabolism 
So, uh, if you are not able to do all the asanas of Surya Namaskaram, at least Vajrasana you can do, that is going to help much for your lungs and increase the blood circulation for the upper part of the body. There are certain other Nadi Shuddhi Kriyas which can be done with the help of an expert in that field. Then steaming can be done, Ministry of Oil says daily twice steaming can be done to remove the toxins from the nasal cavity. So steaming can be done, some massages can be done, then uh, steam inhalation, steam bath can be done. All these things are basic things which as I said Kriyas in tackling the pandemic. Then when coming to a visa, soft food, visa liquids, visa activities, now we are seeing single drugs which can help building immunity. So, as we already discussed, turmeric, dry ginger, people, which is long pepper, then tulasi, then what we call as karpura valli in Tamil is panjari. So, that can be had, muleti, elachi, garlic, ashwagandha, all these things are single herbs which you can get from your household or near your house. Ashwagandha can be got in the shops easily. So, all these things are going to help you to build immunity. Of course, now we are coming to the main part of this presentation. We are seeing certain immunity building medicines of Ayurveda. You all know about Chavanaprash. Chavanaprash is given for kids for uh, recurrent cold, cough and such other infections. Kids are uh, being uh, prescribed Chavanaprash. Chavanaprash is a very good medicine. It can be given to kids. It can be given to adults. But if you have diabetes and other symptoms, then Chavanaprash has uh, sugars into it, it may not be helpful. You can take Indukanta Kashayam which is a very old and very famous medicine of Ayurveda and that is being promoted by Indian government and Tamil Nadu government and Kerala government and there are a lot of clinical trials now going on with these medicines for COVID positive patients and we are getting very encouraged results with these medicines. Then there are certain other medicines that can be used, I don't think this will be of any used to you because these are too technical you may not be understanding things so these are some of the other medications based on the signs and symptoms these can be used and there are certain siddha medicines that can also help to build immunities so that is what we call as kabajura kudinir nilavemba kudinir amukara churanam tablet and nellikai legium nellikai means it's amla so these are the other medicines that can also be used while having this pandemic so that they help us to promote immunity and these are some researchers see these are not just herbal medicines there are certain researchers going on on all these medicines so these medicines have been published in international journals so Indukanta Kashayam has antioxidant properties that has been proved then Dashamulam has anti-inflammatory analgesic and uh, other properties then we have Agastya Rasayanam which has uh, which is good for bronchial asthma and bronchitis allergic bronchitis so that's already under research and we have uh, had published papers on it then we have uh, Kushmanda Rasayanam which is going, going to help in chronic bronchitis which is one of the features of COVID. So all these things are some of the medicines which is going to help uh, during this pandemic. See, uh, we are coming to the last part of this presentation. As I already told, take try to take the six tastes in your food. Ayurveda is not a medicine, it is your lifestyle. It's not just prescription based medicine it's about your diet it's your, about your lifestyle and only when your diet and lifestyle fails somewhere then we are going to support it with medicines it's not going against your body or against your diet so diet and lifestyle are very much important it's not in ayurveda but it's for your health diet and lifestyle are important along with that ayurveda can help you we in tamil we say in tirukural we say noi nadi noi mudal nadi adhidanikum vai nadi vai pachayan See, seeing the root cause and treating it is very essential, which is actually what Ayurveda does. We are not treating symptoms because when you get a pain, then you take a painkiller. As the name suggests, you are killing only the pain, not going to the causative factor for the pain. The same way, you should address only the causative factors, not the symptoms. So, Ayurveda may not address the symptoms immediately. That is why for emergency, Ayurveda may not be helpful. But for all chronic issues, Ayurveda will definitely help. The concept of immunity and immune building medicines are not in modern medicine at all. Most of them, they give you supplements like vitamins, minerals and other things. But holistic supplement is not available. Whereas Ayurveda or any traditional medicine for that matter, either be it 
traditional Chinese medicine or Siddha or Yunani or Ayurveda or even homeopathy can give you certain medicines which can help you to build immunity. There are a lot of studies which have been done and which are going on already. So they are suggesting that these medicines are effective simply to say if a medicine is not effective it cannot be there for 3000 years. So when a medicine is being there for 3000 years it means that this system is effective and it has still has answers. If you ask me a question has Ayurveda helped in such epidemics? Yes I can say you because previously we had swine flu, we had dengue. You know governments was promoting Siddha and Ayurveda medicines you can see most of the modern hospitals were distributing Nilavimba Kashayam and we were able to tackle it. Now also if you see in COVID also in Tamil Nadu particularly the death rate is very low because mass distribution of the Kashayams and medicines of Siddha and Ayurveda are happening and that is why probably the death rate is kept very low in Tamil Nadu uh, more than any city or any country in the world because we are supplementing with our own medicines along with modern medicines. So Ayurveda doesn't have side effects, it cures the root cause and it helps to preserve your health. It not only treats disease, so it helps to prevent your health. So Ayurveda is not a grandma's potion, it is scientifically validated. It has inbuilt guidelines to analyze a disease, to diagnose a disease and give medicines. It's not just what it comes in WhatsApp and in uh, Facebook, uh, take this and that and that is going to help. No, it's not that. We have specific guidelines. We see Nadi, Malab, Mutram, Jigwa, Shabda, Sparsha, Drik, Kakrdi, which means we diagnose a patient based on examination of Nadi, which is pulse, Malam, Mutram. We ask the patient about how is his urine, how is his stools, then eyes, how is his eyes, then how is his tongue, how he walks, does he produce any sound while breathing, does he produce any sound while walking. All these things we are going to analyze and then only write a prescription. So Ayurveda is not just that can be discussed on uh, phone or just like that. So Ayurveda of course it has preventive aspect but curative aspect you need a proper qualified doctor to have a curative part of Ayurveda to help you. So with that I finish my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you team Rotary Club of Chennai Coastal for having me invited here to speak on the topic. I was little rushing because I had some patients and in between I came in. So I'm going to go and uh, continue with the consultation session. You can go ahead with the questions. This uh, Kabasura, yes, Kabasura sir. Kulini, how many days it is supposed to be had? The government of Tamil Nadu guidelines say that Kabajura Kulini has to be taken uh, completely for a month's duration. But some people will have a hotter body, some people may not like the taste. So what is my advice is, you can take one session like morning alone, one cup of Kabajura Kulini, I'll let you know how to take it. Take 5 grams of the coarse powder, heat it in 200 ml of water, reduce it to 50 ml, that is one fourth you have to reduce, filter it and you can add if you want, if you are not diabetic, you can add little jaggery because we have small kids at home, so they will not like this taste. You can add little jaggery to it and drink it in the empty stomach in the morning, maybe 4 to 5 days a week and then you can give a 3-4 days gap and again you take 5 days. So in that way it can be continued throughout this pandemic. That is one way and when you see, see this is an adult dose 50 ml, when you want to give it to a kid, you can calculate the ml based on his weight. If it is a 10 kg kid, you give 10 ml. If it is a 20 kg kid, give a 20 ml. On an average adults 50 to 60 kilos, so we are saying 60 ml, 50 to 60 ml. For kids it can be decided on their weight. So that is how Kabajaro Kutinir can be taken. It has 15 ingredients out of which Nilavembu is also an ingredient. So you don't need to take Nilavembu Kashayam separately. But if at all you have some symptoms like I have mild sore throat, I have light cough, cold and all. If you are fearing then you can take uh, the uh, same Kabajaro Kutinir twice daily continuously until the symptoms go back. Maybe 14 days, 15 days until the symptoms go back daily twice you can. Uh, uh, a lot of people are talking about Arsenia so both the medicines can be taken together? Sir, uh, Arsenicum album, as I said, every system, every traditional medicine system, including homeopathy, offer their own solutions. In homeopathy, we have Arsenicum album. My mother is a graduate in homeopathy. My father is a graduate in Siddha and I am a postgraduate in Ayurveda. So I am little aware of all these uh, medicines. 
Arsenicum album 30 is a homeopathic medicine which is primarily given for cold related chest related complaints so it can be given in a protective mode also and what they suggest is in government of Tamil Nadu's notice they suggest only three days of dosage of uh, arsenicum album only three days but what generally people say is it can be given for seven days in a month and then you leave off the rest 23 days of that month and next seven days you take that is how it is given so you can definitely take Kabajara Kudinir and Arsenicum album together there is no problem maybe you can have a time gap between them maybe in the morning empty stomach you take Kabajara Kudinir and later maybe after one hour or so you can take this uh, Arsenicum album no harm in it Sir, Siddha and Ayurveda both are similar systems which were flourishing in India uh, in the same part of time. Ayurveda was predominantly North India and the Siddha was predominantly South India. So, you can see, I can uh, give you a best example. We also wear sari and the people in the North also wear sari, but there is a difference of wearing it. The same way, the concepts and basic ideas of both the systems are same, but there are some differences based on religional climate and cultural variations so based on these we have some differences in the system but basic concepts of panchamha buddha that is vayu akasham agni jalam and prithvi and the seven datus that is building blocks of the body then we have shiva vishnu parvati nandi all these uh, the holistic concepts are all same between both the systems the uh, only difference is seasonal climatic variations are there you call it tulsi in hindi Whereas in Tamil we call it as Tulasi, but both mean the same, it's the same plant. That is how Siddha and Ayurveda, there is no difference in plants and the way they are used. It's only the naming and some changes because when you go to North India, you have extreme cold climates. So that is why some alcohol based medicines like Asam and Arishtam are there in Ayurveda. Whereas when you come to South India, we have only three seasons, hot, hotter, hotter, no cold season at all. That is why this Asoma Aristam is not there in Siddha at all. So such differences are there between two systems, otherwise both the systems are same. Doctor, that arsenic, how many days arsenic is supposed? The government of Tamil Nadu in their notification says only three days, but generally homeopathic physicians give it for seven days, sir. It's a small medicine, you get it for 40 rupees, a small bottle get it for 40 rupees and then maybe for entire family that will be sufficient so thank you doctor once again thank you thank you all thank you once again Generally, I say the highest proficiency a doctor can get in his uh, uh, profession is he has to become jobless. So that is the highest proficiency a person, a doctor can get because everybody, if everybody is healthy, they need not visit a doctor. 
so uh, doctors ultimate uh, aim is to make everybody healthy they are only on paper stock but nobody no doctor wants that pakka joda so uh, i am the sita let's refer this kind of medicine as a original and let allopathy be called the alternate therapy or alternate very true Very true, uh, very true, sir. Very true. Our our systems are mainstream medicines. Uh, allopathy is actually alternative medicine, but now we are calling our system as alternative medicine. Yeah, thank you so much, sir, for being part of today's meeting. Uh, uh, I thank you one and all for uh, participating in today's meeting. Some of the informed uh, all the members, uh, their loss in fact, our members who have not attended today's uh, conversation, in fact, their 